What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia. Now, as you guys know, today is August 25th, and today is a very special day. Of course, no new Hero Academia episodes, P5, and all that shit. But you guys know today is the long awaited day that we have all been waiting for, at the very least I have. Today is August 25th, so you all know what today is. The fight between KSI and Denji versus Logan and Jake Paul is today. Y'all know I'm very hyped for this fight. Y'all know I've been doing a shit ton of react videos to this fight. You know, from videos KSI has done to, you know, like, you know, the press conferences. I've done it all. I don't think I haven't done is their diss tracks, which I still have, which in case you wonder, I haven't actually listened to those yet. But, yeah, today's the fight. I got it. I managed to find it for free. Got it. Thought it's free to play on my. I got muted right now. But it's play on my laptop right now. Got it. It's just kind of like you know, just in there chilling. Um, so far, I think right now I think the JMX fight is going on, but I have no idea who the JMX is, and I frankly don't care. So yeah, I got the fight. If you guys want to watch it for free, I'll probably talk. I'll probably say something about it on my Twitter and my Insta. So probably mostly on my Twitter. I don't know if I'm gonna talk about it on my Insta, but you know, check me out on my socials because I might end up like you know sharing the link there. So yeah, you want to see the fight for free? Go check that. out. And, so yeah, anyway, enough of me talking about the fight, the ass whooping of the century. Mm, I cannot wait to see KSI finally beat the living shit out of Logan Paul and Deji doing the same thing to Jake. I'm more, mm, man, am I looking forward to seeing Deji just beat the shit out of Jake Paul because I hate Jake Paul way more than I hate Logan. I mean, I hate Logan too, but, ooh, Jake Paul, ooh, man, do I want to fucking kill that fucker. Anyway, enough of me talking about the Paulers, about the Pauls, you know, if you guys ain't here for that, you guys are here for me talking about Hirawaka. And, as you guys know, this week was filler. Complete filler. No canon material here. I mean, unless you count the movie as canon, but no. But, yeah. I mean, I will say this much. <clears throat> I wasn't that, I wasn't excited at all for this episode because when I heard Tyler go, Saving the world with love, I was like, oh, that sounds cringy as hell. The episode at all honestly wasn't that cringy. Like the saving the world with love part does actually have sort of purpose and it does you know work well. The episode, but this episode was more or less just to advertise the movie. Like legit, if y'all saw it, this literally was just advertisement. They like they tri like they try to play a trailer in there, you know, like on, on like a TV screen in there. You know, um, one of the characters that one of the characters I'm assuming that was in the movie makes an appearance in here. They play, actually play a full fledged clip from the movie actually in here, and they spend you know they advertise it a lot. And this episode was more or less just like the build the, was the bridge between the anime and the movie. That's essentially what this episode was. Why Bo just couldn't release this as like a standalone OVA alongside the next week's episode? Like, you know, let Crunchyroll and Funimation, like, you know, have and let them dub it? I don't know why they had to take a whole episode out of, you know, their out of season 3 slot just for this episode that is more or less just an advertise for, advertisement for me. Now, I'm not hating Bones for advertising the movie. You know, you gotta advertise your shit. I got nothing, I got no beef with them, you know, advertising the movie. But when you're doing a decade in a whole episode that's pretty much just after that's really its only purpose is really just to advertise the movie, it kinda makes it seem pointless. And you're like, why couldn't you just release this like a standard like a like a standalone OVA? Or you know, and but or bundle it with like the and bundle it like with the Blu-ray from the movie, or just play it before the movie. <coughs> <coughs> you know? I don't know why Bones couldn't just do that instead, you know. Then next week we're getting back to canon material no more. <coughs> No more filler, no more filler. Just canon. We're gonna back to like you know, getting uh, to like grand, you know, getting Orca and all that shit. Which you know, hey, I mean the filler gets to the filler. In all honesty, the episode this week was okay. It was okay. It was pretty good. In all honesty, I actually really I enjoyed it. Um, I would definitely say it's probably like the my least favorite Hero Walk episode just because I mean it did have some jokes and like they said you know you gotta have fun when you can. And yeah, I mean this episode was pretty fun to watch, but you know. Anyway, so yeah, let us begin with this week's episode. Okay, but what I, I will say, um, one last thing before I do uh, begin this review, um, of course, you know, the hero, of course, you guys know I also watched the double hero Waka, and, oh, and this week they actually showed off the other episode uh, with Senji, uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure his name was Senji, uh, you know, when it's by Bakugo, Kaminari, and Kirishima. Love his dub voice, by the way. Love it. So yeah, let's get the episode. Now, I will give Bones at least credit for this. They're at the very least self-aware about how, yes, this is filler, and yes, this is like the worst possible time for us to drop into filler when, it, when we are just advertising the movie. 
I will at least give Bones credit that they're at least self-aware about it because they start the episode off. There's like this, like it's like this newsroom area where you got Deku and you got Red All Might. They're both wearing like sh of yellow shirts. I think they said like plus ultra with the like the My Hero Academia logo on the back. And they're like, I am here with the matching clothes with Young Midoriya. And it almost like, but oh my god, I said the we were just there when they were about to face off against Grand Orca. Why, why are we here? It's like, because of Midoriya, we need to have fun when we can. And because we need to advertise more, because fucking why not? You didn't have to say it, but you know. You know, but that's like I said, this episode is just to advertise the movie! <laughs> Christ, and Naruto do this with, like, the ship in it do this with the Naruto, because I don't recall them, like, stopping a whole episode just to advertise their movie! I don't even think ship in it did this! I don't recall part one ever, part one of Naruto doing this, Dragon Ball never did this! Like I said, I'm not hating, but I'm just saying, like, <sighs> Why did y'all need to just stop everything to do a whole episode just to advertise the movie? Why? 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 Anyway, so yeah, I will at least give Bones credit that they're the very least self-aware about this, so I'll give Bones credit there. Anyway, so he's like, yo, we need to have fun, yo, Midori. He's like, yo, we are here to save the world with love. And now, play the OP. And then the Yoda of the OP plays and the episode starts. We actually find out that this episode takes place um, before July, I think it said. But it, it pretty much actually does take place. They say right there that this does take place before training camp. So this actually, so this is like, you know, um, after season two, but before season three actually, you know, begin, began. And so, you know, all my walks into the kind of, like, I'm guessing it's the teacher's lounge. He's like, oh, morning, and then there's midnight, Cementos, watching TV. So it's like, oh, yeah, there's a special on you all about TV. And it's a fucking trailer for the movie. <sighs> like I said, guys, I didn't hate this episode. I just, it just, with, like, the constant average, like, when I first saw, well, like, when we saw the preview. Like, yo, special episode, like, I was like, okay, okay, fine, you want to shove in some filler for some fun and quick laughs, fine. But, it kind of makes this episode seem that much more pointless when it was literally just all an ad for the movie. That's really my biggest problem, that it's like just an ad for the movie. Why couldn't just Bones just, you know, release this as a standal as a standalone OVA, you know? Or, you know, bundle it with, like, the Blu-ray for the movie, or, you know... I don't know, play it before them with like Pixar does those shorts. I don't know. Something along those lines I feel a bit better than just, you know, airing it like or better just airing it alongside the next week's episode of season three. I said that would be better than, you know this, but like I said the episode itself was good, but the constant av advertise the movie I'm just making like this episode was more or less just pointless than just to like get people especially in Japan because the movie isn't even here yet in the States we don't get to like the end of September you know well I know it's already airing in Japan but here in the States but it, except for us Westerners because like you know the movie's not out yet here it doesn't come but it's not coming out here until uh, September and it ends in like you know October you know so it's even more useless for us Westerners because we're like we don't have the movie so we can't come out watching it Bones come on man Anyway, so back to the episode. So after they like, you know, advertise the movie with like the trailer, and you know, they're like, and All Might's like, oh, Dave. That really takes me back. I'm like, oh, y'all are really advertising this movie. Anyway, All Might gets an email on computer, and the same thing as like when he got that, um, on uh, that call on his phone, it's like, a phone call is here! A phone call is here! It's like, an email is here! An email is here! And, so, you know, then, you know, we got, and then, you know, Aizawa comes up, he's like, you know, okay, what time do we begin the special class? It's pretty much, it's pretty much summer school in a lot of ways, I guess you would call it. Um, there's really just, like, you know, some extra classes you could take, you know, in case you feel like still training during, you know, <clears throat> Uh, summer break. So, you know, there's, so there's that. So anyway, they get to the class, it's, uh, it's a lot shorter, it's a lot smaller, and it's just, you know, like, this class is going to be much smaller, and, you know, it's harder, and it's only, like, six of them, which, in other words, means it's, like, the most popular characters of Hero Walk in this episode, which is Deku, Todoroki, Bakugo, Ida, um, Ura Uraraka, uh, Sue, and, uh, Bakugo. 
I think I said everyone, yeah. Oh yeah, and Ida. I know of course Ida. So like like yeah, that's a six. You know, Ida, Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, Uraraka, and Shu. So yeah. He talks about how like you know there's like they're going that you call this class is gonna be uh, harder than you like your normal classes and you know Deku actually has like we have this little callback season one where it's like if we fail I wonder if we're gonna get if he's gonna threaten to expel us again which of course you know it's a callback back to season one with like you know that whole you know when they when they first stopped there and so and then you know they're talking about like you know that you're actually going to be doing like you're that you're going to take it down a hypothetical villain and Uraraka and Deku are like oh sweet that's really hero like and then we just have we just zoom in on Aizawa's eye and then everyone's back into their normal positions when they when they when he first walked into the room <laughs> and so all my then shows to be like I am here from the back door and so everyone's like oh my god. Yeah, and then you know it's talks about like you know that also um Midnight, Cementos, um, as well as um present Mike are all gonna be helping out with this um with this like this I guess you could know, I guess you call it simulation or whatever you want to call it. So they get to the so they get to the scene of the crime. Um, it's a bank rot it's a jewelry store. Um, the, there's a crim there's a villain. They don't. They want. Uh, Isles doesn't tell them how many uh, villains there are, or how many hostages there are. But you know, it's a typical hostage situation. He's locked in. You know, he wants some jewels. The cops are blocking this um, front door, and he's like, you know, get him away. So they are deciding how to handle the situation, how to, of course, you know, get the villain and rescue the hostages. So they're there, and then Ida tries to ask a question. And he's like, oh, and it was, I was like, I'm not answering any questions. So it's like, you know, figure it out yourself. So, um, then, so, Uru, so, um, <laughs> so everyone discusses, like, you know, how should we figure this out? And they're all kind of like, peeking out the corner, and then we have, I love how Bakugo is just like, well, everyone's kind of like this whole wise Todoroki, like, you know, um, I love how Bakugo just kind of just sitting there being like, ugh. <laughs> and so he says, he actually, uh, he has an idea. He actually tells Uraraka to go up there by, like, this little, like, uh, I guess, I don't know what you call it, like, this little, like, platform. Um, on top of the building, that where they can, where it gives them a good view of what's inside, so they know how many hostages and villains they are in the room. Ida also, well, Adeko's looking out, he finds out who the villain is, which is of course, which we find out when Todoroki calls him as a way to distract, as calls the villain as a way to distract, so Udra can get up there without him noticing. Um, he says he played by All Might. So, you know, so Todoroki is calling him, he's telling him, like, no, oh, I'm a hero, I'm, you know, a pro, you're the culprit. What do you demands? So I tell him his demands, like, you know, it's, it's, it's the usual stuff while Uraraka, you know, uses her cork to get up there, and she, um, and she looks at the, she, and Deku told her to use her left hand to know how many villains there are, and her right to know me, as many host, what, how many hostages are there, if I remember correctly. It might have been flipped. But that's pretty much it. So we find there's one villain and three hostages, and his only demand is, of course, that the usual, like, no, get the cops out of here so I can escape, yada, yada, yada. So, and then Bakugo being Bakugo, Bakugo's, and as we know, Bakugo's not the most patient of people out there. It's like, ugh, this is stupid. He ends up just blows my ch and then he just charges in there, and then while well, he tells, like, you know, all of you guys go rescue the hostages, so he just blasts in there, barges through the window, and actually, Aizawa says, like, yo, no, I knew this was going to happen. But this essential tra training isn't for you guys to learn, isn't for you guys to fight. And as we see, when Bakugo gets in there, they see that actually um, the villain, or I guess you could say All Might, is dead. And as I always said, this is where your training really begins. So the rest of the episode is just kind of like this murder mystery of like, who killed the villain? Why did he die? Who killed him? You know, all that, all that good shit. So. They get inside, you know, they're looking around, they find the jewelry, they find, of course, find his course. Sue actually, you know, uses her hair to, like, wiggle her nose just to see, I don't know what you see, and, uh, and, and All Might actually, you know, reacts. But she thinks that sh that's just All Might, you know, being a little out of character, because, you know, you know, because, of course, he's supposed to be dead, so he shouldn't be moving. But in actuality, that ends up playing a major role at the end of the episode. Ironically. Actually, not ironically, I guess. Uh, funny enough, I guess I should say. And so, you know, and so they go on, so they interview, so they give her the hostages, they tell them, like, yo, like, and they try to, like, you know, look around, trying to find evidence to, to what could have happened, because they find a knife, which is a murder weapon, um, that killed them. So they end up looking around, they end up, like, you know, of, of course, you know, my, uh, interrogate hostages, um, they actually first search through their wallets just to make sure, like, you know, and they check all of them got a decent enough cash to buy jewelry. 
So then they interrogate them. First up is Cementos, who actually was actually the other person that she works at the jewelry store. And he tells them that he was the guy that put the money in the bag, or I guess the jewels in the bag. Um, you know, then he got tied up, arrested, yada yada yada. They get to midnight, where she said she was just here to buy some accessories. They get the present mic, and the man asks so angry, he's like, Yo, I was here to get a ring, a David Brooks for my girl, yo! Yeah! And he's like moving all around, Florence of Mike is just going a little too ham. Going a little too ham here. And so. They, and so they end up deciding, then Ida looks around, he finds out that, you know, there was no other, there was no one else, there's no way else anyone else could go. So you find out that, you know, of course, that the culprit that killed him is in this room. It is one of those three people. And so, you know, everyone's thinking, e Baka goes like, it's just like, explosives are popping up in his head, he's like, we should just make them confess! He's like, no, you don't get rest of that! like, I know that! And so, he's like, Deku, you have a plan, don't you? And where we find out that Deku, like I said, Deku's amazing. Like this man has such a great mind. He he wonders, um, okay, if he was after the jewels, why didn't he immediately leave when he did? And the uh, cement tells him, like, oh, that's because when I um after I gave him the jewels, like I filled the bag with the jewels, the cops showed up. He's like, okay, who called? Okay, did you call the police? He's like, no. And we find out that it was actually someone from the outside, which it was actually midnight. What did I say? Midnight. She's actually a really good actress and like like legit. Now great of course you know the voice acting but like you know if we just assume that that's actually just midnight acting, she's a great actress, like woo. She has like an acting career because like she was actually really good here. I'm talking about like you know her character, the voice her voice had also did a great job in this scene. But you know, I'm just saying like, you know, Midnight Kid is actually a decent actress. Um, anyway. So, and then he ends up thinking, like, you know, that he actually, um, that he knew, her, that he was actually, like, you know, Midnight, you knew that, you knew the criminal, didn't you? And it was like, <gasps> you know, it was like, it's like, this is like some, like, like, old, like, you know, murder mystery move from, like, the 60s or something. He goes on that he knew her, that she called the police, that she, that she knew he committed crimes, and that, you know, she wanted him to stop, but she couldn't, so she called the police, got inside, you know, he was shaken by it, ended up tying her up. And, okay, and everyone's like, okay, 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 that explains that, but what, that doesn't explain how he died. And we find that we, and then Deku comes to the conclusion that was actually, uh, suicide. Because he, uh, finds that, uh, that actually, you know, Midnight and this, and this criminal were actually a thing. They were dating, or they loved each other, something along those lines. Um, and because he thought, like, you know, if I get caught, my relationship with her will might get exposed, which means that she's kind of dentured pretty much as a massive target on her back. So, instead, so to make sure that doesn't happen, she ended up killing herself to save her. And so, it was like, <laughs> it's so sad, and we got Bakugo, and they were like, what is this joke? <laughs> I love Bakugo. And so, you know, then, you know, everyone's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> everything goes down, she's crying, and then, you know, I was like, you know, good, everything, and then she's like, and then she immediately switches back to her nurse, and she's like, ah, that was fine, they're like, she's back to her normal self already, I'm like, oh, damn, she's like, man, she's good. <laughs> And so, again, so, he thought, like, you know, good job, you took care of the crowd, but he said, like, you know, but there was one major thing you missed, mind of death, but why you get zero points, and it was actually because All Might's body had disappeared, because he was literally running off, he's like, oh, ha, ha, freedom, and he's, like, running away, and, you know, like, <laughs> and then they're like, didn't you notice when he hit, he was still alive, when, and, of course, like I said, why not Sue, you know, waved her hair in front of his nose, and he kind of twitched, that was not All Might just, you know, going out character a little bit that was legit him just saying like yo I am still alive here because you know they didn't tie him up they just kind of left his corpse there so he just kind of just ran off and so <laughs> so like zero points and then we get back to all then you know they get back to school I was like oh man keep my muscular form for that long it's exhausting he's like oh yeah I got an email and it's, from, it's, and it's about um, this girl who I'm assuming is a character from the movie um, she's always like, you know, I, I, like, you know, hey, all my, how are you doing? I heard that, you know, kid, that, you know, summer break's going on, and, like, you know, at school, right, in Japanese schools right now. She appears to just invite them to I Island, which is, of course, the location where the movie takes place. And, like I said, this is, like, this episode was just a massive advertised ad for the movie. They even played this little clip. Uh, from which I'm assuming is from the movie, which I don't even think this scene was even in trailers, where pretty much it's just like, you know, Dave with the young all might talk about how he wants to become the symbol of peace and, you know, all that shit. And so, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, so he ends up deciding that, yes, he's going to go to this uh, to this trip. Of course, he invites Deku, tells like, you know, we're leaving right now. 
start packing. And he's like, okay, I'll start packing right away. Then they ended up so back to with all my deck when they were on their little newsroom with the plus ultra yellow shirt. Uh, they're like, you know, okay, next week we're going back to real material. Uh, and he talks about, and of course he tells him like, you know, go watch the movie, please, please keep supporting Hero Aka. Yada yada yada. We get the preview for next week, which you know finally is back to can material. And yeah, so overall, this episode was good. I enjoyed it for what it was. I will say this is definitely the weakest out of the filler episodes that we have gotten because with the Sue episode and the Momo episode, um, those at least had a purpose of showing up, like, you know, Sue during her internship and what Momo was doing during, like, you know, the first exams for the provisional licenses. And both of them were, all, were both pretty good. I would say I like the Sue episode a little bit better because I feel like Horikoshi, it felt like Horikoshi probably had, like, a little bit better, more involvement in it. And I just kind of, like, enjoyed it a little bit more overall. Because like I said, when I was watching the moment, I was like, you know, I said, like, you know, the episode felt a little off to me until, like, you know, the very end with, like, you know, that scene with Deku and Bako about, you know, them that they're princess, you know, that they're, like, that they inspire everyone else's class. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, so overall, I guess, episode, a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, it was pretty good, but, eh. It was kind of pointless in all honesty, like, if this episode wasn't, like, if, if this was, I feel like this episode was better off just being, like, a standalone episode, or not standalone episode, a standalone OVA, it probably would have been a little bit better, and I probably wouldn't be so hard on it, where I'm like, this is just an ad, like, what are you doing, Bones, why are you doing this, man? Anyway, so hope you all enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new, follow me, subscribe, and Twitter, flag, leave down trucks below, and as always, come back for more, see you guys next time.